Hey everybody and welcome back to another Farming Simulator 22 how-to video. Today we're going to take a look at a set of console commands that I frequently use for the purpose of mod testing, preparing for how-to videos, or preparing for a map tour. Now before we get into the video, this video is brought to you by Delilah Paxiron. Thank you for being a farm baron. Now, if you feel that you cannot trust yourself to not use these commands in order to just completely cheat in a whole bunch of product or completely avoid actually doing farm work, then by all means, just stop watching the video right here. But I thought it would be interesting to show you the commands that I typically use. Um, 10 commands, plus I'm going to give you a little bit of a bonus at the end. So if you stick around for the end, good for you. That often save me a ton of time in setting up for mod reviews, how-to videos, or in preparing for map tours. But in the wrong hands, these commands can completely ruin your gameplay. So watch and use at your own risk. In order to use these commands, you have to enable dev console mode. And I've got a video in my how-to playlist on how to do that, I will put a little tick up in the upper right corner to take you to that video if you haven't already enabled the dev console. Assuming you have enabled the dev console, you're going to be able to pull the console up by hitting the tilde key. That is what we have here. And then you hit it once more time in order to get the cursor where you can then retype into the console. Now, in addition to needing the dev console enabled on several of these commands you also need to start the game with the slash cheats command and in order to do that you're going to have to go and edit either your shortcut or some parameters in either the steam launcher or the epic launcher and i'm going to show you how to do that here in a little bit but also this video is for pc players only Console players, I'm very sorry, but there is just absolutely no way that you guys can get to the dev console because you just don't have that level of access to the Xbox or PlayStation. So let's just go ahead and jump to see how we're going to enable the slash cheats on the Epic Launcher, the Steam Launcher, and the PC shortcut if you have the digital download or physical media installs. Now, if you purchased Farming Simulator 22 from epic the way you're going to add the slash cheat is in the epic launcher you're going to go up here to settings and then scroll down till you have it. manage games select farming simulator 22 just ignore the fact that this says farm sim 19 we're going to pick additional command line arguments and then inside of this box we are going to put slash cheats and then if you want to skip the intro videos, you can hit slash skip capital S for start capital B V for videos. So we have slash cheats and slash skip start videos. And then when we launch the game, it will enable the cheats options as well as skipping the intro videos. If you have the Farming Simulator 22 game available on Steam, then the way you're going to add the slash cheats command is from your Steam library. You're going to want to right click on Farming Simulator 22. Again, ignore the fact that I have Farming Simulator 19 selected here. We're going to go down here to properties and under launch options, we are going to put in slash cheats and for FS22, if you wish to skip the intro videos, you can do that by basically adding slash skip capital S for start capital V for videos. And now the next time you launch the game, you will have the cheats command enabled as well as you will be skipping the intro videos. For people who have the digital download from Giants or installed off of physical media, what you're going to do is you're going to select your Farming Simulator 22 shortcut, right click on that, and you want to pick Properties. And from there, in the target address, you're going to want to add after the quote. Okay, so it's 
wherever you installed the game, Program Files x86, Farming Simulator 22, Farming Simulator.exe, quote, you're going to put a space, cheats, slash cheats, slash skip, capital S for start, capital V for videos. And then the next time you launch the game, it will skip the starting videos and you will have the cheat options enabled. Just want to demonstrate that is basically how it comes up once you have the slash cheats slash start or skip start videos enabled. So now that you have launched the game and you have your slash cheats enabled, the first command we're going to take a look at is GS upper case C. All of these commands are case sensitive. Collectibles show all. And when we hit enter, what we're going to notice is in our PDA, we now have little yellow dots all over the place. And these little yellow dots are going to represent where there are collectibles on the map. Now, I am not really worried about people being all like, you just spoiled it for me. I haven't been able to find the collectibles and I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry. But at this point, if you're watching this video, then you probably aren't really worried about me spoiling where the collectibles are located. This command be, be, can be quite useful if you're trying to find that one or two last elusive collectible and you haven't been able to figure out where on earth it is. And you'll notice that once you collect a collectible, the yellow dot is removed from the minimap. So that's way you know that when you hit that command, you're only seeing the collectibles that you still need to enter. The collectibles are going to show up until you exit the game and then re-enter it. There is no way to basically turn those off. The next command that we're going to take a look at is GS Farmland 5. And then there is a companion to that, Farmland by All. And then if you can buy it, well, guess what? You can sell it or you can sell all. So I'm going to go ahead and sell all of the farmland on the map. So now if we go here and we go to our lands, you're going to see that we own nothing here on the map. Now, there is a little bit of a caveat to this particular command, and that is that the farmland is not necessarily the same as the field ID. So if we just hit GS farmland buy and we hit enter. It's gonna tell us the parameter we need to put in is the farmland ID. So I'm gonna enter 57. I'm standing here at field 57. So I've just bought farmland 57. Well, let's see where that really is. Farmland 57 is down here in the southeast corner of the map. Nowhere is really close to field 57. So where this command really really shows its power is when you buy all or sell all. So just like that, I have now bought all of the land that can be purchased on this map. I can reverse that by doing the sell all option. And now I have sold all of the farmland available on the map. Why would this be useful? Well, in a map tour, maybe the farm, the map author has set up the farms to be buyable and only after you buy them do triggers show up. Well, I'll often do this command in order to buy all the fields on the farm when I am doing my cursory look of a map to see how many secondary farms are there and do they have various animal areas and such. It can also be very useful if you're setting up a community multiplayer server and you want the multiplayer server to have all of the farmland already owned, well, you can just real quickly buy all the farmland and not have to spend a dime. You don't have to click on each one and say buy. The next one we're gonna take a look at is GS Field. Sorry, GS Field. 
set fruit. And what this is going to allow us to do is it's going to allow us to basically put crop in a field without actually seeding a crop in the field. So the way this is going to work, we're going to hit GS field fruit, and then we're going to give it the field ID. This time it will be the field ID that is marked on the PDA, field ID 57. And then we're going to give it a fruit name. We're just going to use wheat. We're going to give it a growth state. We're going to pick growth state one and we're going to hit enter. And now we have seeded wheat and it is in a growing state. If I change this to growth state two, growth state three, growth state four, growth state seven, growth state eight. It's now ready to harvest. Growth state nine. Uh, harvest window is closed. It's now withered. Now we have ready to harvest wheat. Maybe we want to test a harvester mod and we don't have the appropriate crop ready to harvest. We can use this command to instantly put a field of wheat or any other crop at any growth state we want. And it's just, as you can see, just a little bit of experiment as to what growth state you need to put in here. You can put in um, grass with a growth state of four. And now we have ready to harvest grass. Pretty interesting command. You can also do other things with this command. So let's go back to our wheat and let's put it in a growth state of two. We can put in the ground type name. I'm gonna put in um, rolled and what that's going to do is it's going to tell me that's an invalid ground type name but it's going to tell me what ground type names are allowed so i'm going to put in none okay and then we can also say spray type set that's going to be if i've sprayed herbicide so i can set that to zero fertilizer state i can set it to two and that's going to give me 100% fertilizer state. Zero is going to be no fertilizer. One is going to be one state of fertilizer. And two is going to be 100% fertilized. Plow state. Do I want to need plowing or not? Zero or one. I'm going to put in a one. Weed state. Do I want weeds or not? I'm going to put in a four just for fun. It's going to put in weeds in this field. Lime state. Do we want to need liming or not? I'm going to put in a one value. Stubble state, did we mulch this field? I'm gonna give it a one and we're gonna hit enter. And now we have wheat that is growing with weeds in the field. We're at 100% fertilized and we do not need plowing and we do not need lime. If I come back here, I can change these values zero. I can change the field state to zero and the lime state to zero. And now we have no weeds. We need lime. And I'm just now remembering that I turned off need plowing. And I should have remembered I needed to turn that back on. So now we need plowing also. So that's how you can quickly just slap some crop in a field in order to do various testing. The next one we're gonna take a look at is very similar to set field fruit, but it's set ground state. So it's gonna be set field, or GS field set ground, okay? And we're going to go ahead and put in once again, the field index of 57. And then we're going to put in a ground state. So I'm going to put in plowed. I'm going to hit enter. And now the field looks plowed. It's not actually plowed. It just looks plowed. Okay. I could go in here and I could change this to um, harvest ready. Okay. And now it has the harvest ready field state it looks 
like it would maybe have wheat that has already been harvested, but notice there's no there's no stubble here. There's no crop. We're just setting the visual appearance of the field. So we can come in here and we can set it to be plowed. And then we can also set the angle. We're going to set that to zero. Ground layer of zero. Fertilizer state of two. Plowed state of one. Weed state of zero. Lime state of one. Stubble state of one. And now we should have a plowed field that does not need plowing, that is fully fertilized, does not need lime, and has no weeds. So this isn't to get around doing field work. This is, let's say you need to test a cedar or a cultivator and you needed some soil so you can just slap down a plowed state and now work your implement through here as you should so wish. The next one we're gonna take a look at allows you to add whatever you want to a trailer or a tractor. And that is gonna be GS Fill Unit Add. So if we just hit that, we're gonna get the what parameters do we want to put in? We need to go GS fill unit add, fill unit index. So if something has multiple way, multiple fill containers, so like a, a cedar that also fertilizes has two fill indexes, one for seed and two is possibly going to be fertilizer. For this trailer, we have just one fill index, so we're going to put in one. We're going to type in whatever we want, manure, and we're going to add an amount, 10,000 liters. I now have 10,000 liters of manure in this trailer. If I want to get rid of the manure, I just go minus 10,000, and it goes away. Maybe I want 10,000 liters of barley. Now I have 10,000 liters of barley kind of get the gist, right? Solid fertilizer. Oh, I mistyped it. So if you mistype a fill type, it's going to say, hey, this is what the, the fill type really is. So I could add, let's say, a big load of fertilizer and I don't know the capacity of this trailer. I'm going to add 100,000 liters. It's going to fill it to its full capacity, which is 18,500 liters. Again, to get rid of it, minus, and now it is completely empty. We can do the same with respect to our tractor. So I have now disconnected, and we're going to fill unit add. And I'm going to put in um, fuel minus 100. So it's told me the fill types that I can put in here are fill unit 1 is diesel, fill unit 2 is def, fill unit 3 is air. So I intentionally mis-entered it, and it's going to give me some help information. So I can go in here and diesel. And I can take out 400 units of diesel. And now I've completely emptied the fuel in my tractor. If I want to add a little bit of fuel. I've just now put a little bit of fuel in my tractor. So that I can now get to the gas station and fill it up properly. The next one we're going to do is GS. HUD visibility. You ever want to take a nice screenshot and you can't get rid of all of the HUD information? GS HUD visibility will turn that on and off. Just like that. Then we have GS money add. If we put no value in here, it is going to add $10 million to our bank account. 
if we go up and add GS money add and we put a minus next to it, 18, 189, 943, it is going to deduct that particular amount of money from our bank account. So this could be real useful. If you wish to set up a map, you may want to add a bunch of money. So we can add an exact amount to our bank account. You may want to add a bunch of money to your bank account. That way you can do your landscaping. You buy the lands you want. You can put down your buildings. You can buy your equipment you want. And then when you are all said and done, you're like, I want to start with $50,000. Well, I can go here and I can zero out my money and then I can come in and I can add $50,000. And now I have a bank account of $50,000 and I can go on and do my gameplay how I want because I have set everything up. Maybe you wish to set up a multiplayer server with multiple farms and you want everyone to have a specific amount of money at the start after you've bought the farm and after you've bought the appropriate land that you want each farmland to have. But you can use this to add a very specific amount of money to each farm in order to get them up to a specific level. The next command we're going to take a look at is GS Pallet Add. Okay, GS Pallet Add. I'm going to hit enter. And what this allows me to do is basically spawn in a pallet of my choice. Do I want to spawn in a strawberry pallet? I can just go GS pallet add strawberry. And there is a pallet of strawberries. Do I want to add a pallet of seed? Seeds. There's a pallet of seeds. Maybe we want to add a pallet of olive oil. There's a pallet of olive oil. You kind of get the point, right? You pretty much add a pallet of any palatable product that you should so wish. Maybe you wish to test a production mod and you need some product to go into it. Well, you can just spawn pallets and use that. Maybe you're testing a cell point. You want to make sure... The cell point is going to accept the products that it should accept. We can spawn in product and then see if that particular cell point is indeed taking advantage of those products. The next command is GS Layer Flight Mode. And this is going to enable flight mode. And once you have enabled flight mode, Q and J will activate flight mode. Q will allow you to go up, E will allow you to go down, J will disable it. Q and J once again, and then Q, shift will allow you to go up and down faster. And then at that point, you just walk, fly around with W, A, S, and D. Pretty straightforward. Now, the next command that you may be interested in is going to be how to add snow to your map short term very short term and this is for the purpose of possibly just checking to see if a particular placeable has a seasons mask or a snow mask enabled well what we're going to do is we're going to enter gs snow sorry add but what we're going to do after that is we're going to put in a number and that is going to be how many layers of snow we're going to add I'm going to add five. So it is now going to add snow across the map. It will take a little bit for this to happen because it basically spawns snow across the entire map slowly. And now we can see where the snow mask is with respect to our building. We got to be quick because the snow is going to vanish here because, well, the temperatures are fairly high. So we got to be quick with that. But we can plop a building down. We can plop multiple buildings down if we're testing those. We want to see, am I going to get a bunch of snow inside the building? I can just go here and I can add snow. And it will then slowly spawn snow across the map. It's not instantaneous like some of these other commands are. And then we can see, basically, are we getting snow inside of our building? It looks good to me. 
and then just within a few seconds, the snow is going to vanish. So one more, as I promised, one more magical command, and that is GS Teleport. What this allows you to do is instantly spawn anywhere you want on the map. So the command option is going to either take an X and Z position or a field ID. So if we want to spawn at field 81, we are now in the middle of field 81. If we want to spawn in the middle of field 12, but we're now in the middle of field 12. If we want to spawn directly in front of the shop, I happen to know the shop's coordinates. 1884 by 1078. And here we are, right in front of the shop. So guys, those are the 11, let's say, commands that I frequently use when setting up to test mods, to do a how-to video, or to prepare for a map tour. Hope you guys have enjoyed kind of a little look behind the scenes at some of the possible commands that you can use to manipulate the game to basically whatever you should so wish. Let me know down in the comments below what are your favorite commands if I did not touch on them. There are a whole heap load of commands available in the dev console, but again, use them at your own discretion. By no means are you to, to I want you to use these to completely cheat at the game and therefore you're not getting any enjoyment from the game. But sometimes, you know what? You just want to do a big silage harvest and you don't want to go through the time of planting a whole bunch of corn. Well, this can do it for you. Until next time, happy farming.